Hello all and welcome to video classes by Kannur Institutes. Today we will be discussing the next part which is a market demand. In the previous class we all have discussed about the demand and the price relationship okay wherein we were just discussing about a single consumer. So here keeping in mind that he was the only person wherein we have seen how his behavior changes according to the price if the price changes right. So if the price changes then the quantity demanded by him will also varies according to the price which has been changed. So this was only wherein we had studied about a single consumer. But when we are considering or when we are talking about a market is it is it only a single consumer buying in the market or there are so many people buying uh, the commodities in the market. So it's like a whole bunch of people or whole bunch of uh, consumers will be buying one or the other products or one or the other goods in the market right so that's the reason when we are when we are talking about the demand curve or the demand function we have to even consider every consumers right it's it's impossible for us or it's a difficult for us to just to uh, study the demand curve or the uh, change in the price the relation between the price and the uh, demand for a single consumer so here this market demand tells us about uh, the consumers how many consumers are uh, uh, actually buying goods and services in the market so this is consumer one wherein we will be studying his behavior and this is the demand curve of a consumer two okay so his demand curve is something different than the other consumer right or is it same with all the consumer the demand curve will be same with all the consumer no right it differs from the likes and preferences of the consumer or the income of the consumer so basis on that here what we are doing is we are studying the market demand considering all the consumers okay so that's all about the market demand so here see here this is the point pa wherein if the price is at this point then the consumer will be buying less quantity of goods right so that's the reason the quantity demanded at this price is qa but when the price has been fallen to p2 then the quantity has been increased to qb so that's the reason we say that the demand function uh, in case of single commodity when the price falls then the quantity demanded will be increased right so this is the case of consumer a or consumer one and when we are having consumer two because market has so many consumers so here also the nature of the business or the nature of the behavior of a consumer will be equal or the same okay here also when the price is at p1 then the quantity demanded is at q1 but when the price has decreased from p1 to p2 then the demanded for that commodity has increased because the price has been decreased so that's the reason the quantity demanded for that commodity when the price has fallen to p2 the demand will be at the point q2 so when we are talking about these two consumers right so there should be a market demand market demand curve right so that's the reason this is the market demand wherein we derive by adding this consumer 1 plus consumer 2 so that's the reason here you can see p1 is the point at which you can see here q1 quantity from consumer a consumer 2 and qa quantity from consumer a 1 right so this is the quantity demanded by both the consumer at the price p1 and if you see at the price p p at the bay 2 and the p at the b is wherein you can see q2 and qb right so that's the reason we have added this quantity demanded by both the consumer so when we are deriving the market demand it's like you are adding the behavior of the demand curve of each and every consumer so that's the reason you have to add all those 
uh, quantities at each level of the price quoted. So, if you have an example, for example, uh, demand is equal to 10 minus P. This is of for one consumer. And second consumer is 15 minus P. So, here we can see that the demand for each consumer is different, right? So, when we have to derive a demand curve, then it becomes dp plus dp2 right so you have to add these it becomes 10 plus 15 becomes 25 minus as it as it is because these are like terms and this becomes 2p right so by this equation we get to see that this is the price see 10 is the price at which the consumer, the first consumer will not buy any of the commodities which are costing for him more than 10 rupees because 10 is the, his uh, income, okay, budget what we can say. So if any commodities are costing him more than the 10 rupees then his demand will be always equal to zero. Why? Because he cannot buy any commodities which are costing him more than 10 rupees. But that's not the same case for the consumer too because his budget is 15 rupees, okay? So he can buy those goods which are costing more than 10 rupees but even he has certain limitations. Those commodities should be less than 15 rupees. Otherwise, his demand for that commodity will also be zero, okay? So that's the reason if you consider this PA as 10, and this as a 15 okay anything which is here in this area then the demanded for that for that product will be always zero right why because it has been crossed 10 the same reason is also here if any prices for any commodity if it is more than 15 then the consumer is not going to buy any of those goods that's the reason the quantity for that product will be always zero. So by this equation we get to see that the consumer has his own behavior, right? When the prices are within his income or within his budget, then only he will go to buy the goods. Otherwise, he, his demand for that product will be always zero. So this 25 minus 2p is the equation wherein we can see that the consumer demanded by the both A and B, consumer 1 and consumer 2 is 25 minus 2B. So this shows that anything more than 10 rupees cannot be bought by the consumer A or consumer 1. If it is less than 15 then it will be bought by consumer B or consumer 2. So that's about the market demand. So market demand is all about consumers. So here we are not talking about just one consumer. We are talking about many consumers here. So that's the reason we consider every consumer's behavior, buying behavior of every consumer and we add here on the basis of their behavior with the change in the price and the change in the quantity. So that's the that's all about the market demand. In the next class, we will be seeing more on elasticity of demand. See you all in the next video.